Hello, I'm your host Atu Jamir and welcome to our talk show Unfiltered. Before we start with the talk show, let's have a look at a short video to know more about what we're going to discuss about today. Bylaws are the regulations set by the government authorities such as the Ministry of Urban Development Affairs, City Corporation and Developing Authorities. These norms are legal tools that regulate architectural and construction aspects of buildings to achieve orderly development in the area. These set of rules are crucial to protect buildings against fire, earthquakes and structural failures. The Development Authority does not approve a building plan which fails to adhere to the bylaws when planning to construct a property. It is of vital importance to thoroughly understand the term building bylaws to dodge future conflicts. Legally, building bylaws are the construction norms set by the government authorities to ensure uniform development and protect buildings against internal and external hazards. As we have seen in the video, we'll be talking about building by laws as a whole today. And now to get to know more about building by laws, to know if it has been implemented in, all, in our state and also its benefit, we have some special guests with us today. We have engineer Finison Pujar and superintendent engineer PWT Housing Kohima. We also have Mr. Medozo Zango, who is a retired chief engineer, will also be virtually uh, chief architect, I'm sorry, and will also be virtually joined by Apokla Jamir, uh, virtually, uh, who is a principal architect and co-founder of REO Designs based in Dimapur, uh, Dimapur. So thank you so much all of you for joining me today and thank you so much to Mama Apok as well for joining me, even though it's uh, far, we are far away, but thank you so much for joining me. So yeah, um, so before we uh, start with this discussion, uh, the first thing that I think the viewers and also me as the layman would want to know is uh, since we're talking about building by laws, we would want to know what exactly is building by laws because we're, it's a term that is quite unknown to us. And you know, so uh, sir, uh, any one of you, could you please explain to us in short terms what actually building by laws is? Right. You yeah. can go first, um, what is by laws? By laws is actually it's a, ru a rules framed by any organizations for. Uh, administering or disciplining their own internal administrations. Building bylaws when it comes to building bylaws. It is a bylaws to, reg to um, uh, is a set of rules yeah. to um, uh, where the construction of uh, buildings need to take place. So here the rules regulate the coverage, the height of the buildings and uh, uh, and also uh, s the safety measures, which will uh, protect the uh, the buildings from uh, disasters and hazards, disasters which is uh, uh, like earthquakes, hazards like uh, fires, and um, uh, structural failures. All right. So, uh, sir, uh, could you also add up some more to that? Because uh, I think. Uh, there are a set of rules, so they're different, mm. different as well. So, what are the most common kind of laws or the, uh, set of building by laws? Then, what are the most common? In short, actually, it is a. Uh, it means uh, building by law means it's a task of enforcing master plan of a city. So, uh, to do that, what are the things that we have to do? Is actually uh, there should be you know zoning of uh, you know areas. Sometimes uh, places like unsafe places, uh, unstable lands, that should be zoned and stable lands, that should be zoned or say green areas or something like that. No, there, there can be so many you know, zoning and regulations as our sir has already mentioned. So like that, uh, and uh, regulations in the sense for construction of buildings within the you know, rules, norms. Mm. So uh, covering all the safety measures and uh, safety measures as well as you know, uh, providing proper spaces and uh, green areas or all those etc etc so that is uh, actually a government policy a government guidelines set of government guidelines so that is a uh, building by laws all right also uh, joining us today we also have ma'am uh, virtually joining us so, uh, yeah hello ma'am can you hear me 
Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, okay ma'am, uh, from you, we'd want to know, you know, uh, there must be purposes of this building by laws also. So, could you tell us about, you know, what are the purposes of these laws? Yeah, so, uh, as discussed earlier, uh, the, main, the purposes of building by laws is to uh, ensure the structural stability of the building and to improve the quality of life of the residents and also um, to you know ensure a sustainable future for the uh, development activities. Because nowadays, uh, urbanization is happening at a very rapid pace and building activities are happening you know, very fast. So uh, the building bylaws takes care that all this is done in a streamlined manner. It is safe for the you know, uh, for the people and um, the quality of life does not suffer when these activities are happening. So I think that is the main uh, main purpose of uh, building by law. Would you like to add up any more to that? Like, what is the purpose of a building by laws? Basically, the uh, building by laws means it's, it's for your interest mm. to make you uh, more um, uh, to have a happy living in an environment to yourself and to your neighbors. So uh, a comfortable living where building bundles will regulate all sort of, you know. So actually what happened when we do uh, build up, building bylaws will allow you to utilize the space given by God and the effective use of space and how you will use this space frame given by God, the division of rooms and uh, the spaces that you require for different activities and uh, how it will affect uh, yourself and others, uh, other people. And uh, in doing so, no, mm. there have to be some sort of maybe uh, uh, some standards or some sort of practices where it is good for everybody and that it's formed into a regulations or a bylaws where common people may not understand mm. but once we have these bylaws which is actually a practices uh, uh, learned from the past so uh, it, it helps so uh, would you like to add up more to that as well i can add up but uh, i think you have some more questions uh, relating <laughs> to building bylaws okay, okay. Like after all also you have got the uh, questions yes, I think. Yes, mm. yes. So, so also, uh, we would want to know in Nagaland if building by laws is enforced. We would like to know, and also if it's if it is, then who implements this or who drafts out this building by laws? Uh, so far, my uh, knowledge is concerned. Uh, in Nagaland, actually, building by laws has been uh, was approved in the year 2012 according to a reliable source. However, implementation part is yet to be done. Uh, why? Because. Uh, for enforcement, enforcement, actually, there has to be a full set of uh, experts mm. from various departments. So, I think uh, after roping from various departments, experts, I think the municipal uh, municipal affairs or uh, authority, I think they are the right uh, department to be uh, enforcing this, uh, implementing this building by laws. Why? Because I'm saying this is because uh, taking the example of Guwahati. Where uh, Guwahati, the building by laws is enforced by Guwahati Municipal uh, uh, Development Authority. So, so similarly in our context in Nagaland, I think we have to go in the same line. Mm. So, what are your thoughts on that as well? You mean the Nagaland implementations? Yes, yes, yes. Um, the any any regulations have to be implemented by an authority right. mandated by people right. and uh, unless it is mandated it becomes difficult to implement that mandate is actually have to uh, be done in the uh, municipalities or town councils and uh, unfortunately uh, these municipalities and town councils are uh, yet to be legally you know mm. func become functional because of many factors uh, so um, otherwise this has to be uh, under the purview of these particular authorities because there are many issues involved. Right. So litigation issues will be there, public uh, UN cry will be there. So uh, there have to be some sort of uh, uh, mandate, mandatory uh, body where you can implement this. Right. Uh, 
uh, sir, like you have mentioned about building by laws being implemented in Guwahati, I'm pretty sure there are also other states, uh, I mean, other states in India that noticed in India that have implemented it. So, can you give us some examples on that as well? Yes, yes. In fact, Guwahati, they have been, uh, uh, they have started implementing the year 1998. Mm. Now, if we see, then they are more than 24 years, almost 24, I mean, 24 years. And then our neighboring states like, uh, you know, Meghalaya, they also have, uh, for the last 10 years or so, they have they are implement this, implementing this uh, building by laws. I have uh, even uh, confirmed uh, from a friend also because uh, they, they, they only told me that uh, they get a permission for all this. Uh, I mean, whenever they want to construct a building, they get a permission, only then they can construct. Mm. The same thing with our Mizoram. So like that, uh, they also, for the last 10 years or so, they are, uh, have already started implementing that one. We in Nagaland, though we have been approved, we are still yet to enforce. Yes. So I think we have to, you know, start uh, implementing for the betterment of, uh, you know, everyone, as our sir has already mentioned before. So it is for you or for me. So like a happy living and safe living. Right. Mm. So, so like you have mentioned, uh, like sir have mentioned, it is good to if it's implemented, but we can see, and also I've seen that, uh, you know, it was approved in the year 2001. I think you said that, sir, like, uh, you know, to for implementation. But uh, as I went through Google and also saw Nagaland building by laws, but at the same time, it's not so I'd want to know and also ask, we'd want to know why is it difficult or why has building by laws not been implemented in the state? Yes, sir. Do you have any idea or any inputs on that? See, um, building by laws is a regulations or maybe it is a discipline uh, factor uh, for your uh, for any construction mm -hmm. activities when you build in uh, constructions and um, um, for every human beings we all we all want to take the advantage of our uh, full land given by ancestors and when we do that um, there are there are issues involved there so uh, although it is uh, um, somehow uh, done in 2001 get, uh, then in 2012 uh, and then uh, maybe this topic is coming up again and again mm. but it becomes so difficult to implement as because of the social factors which is involved the social challenges that is happening because the regulatory um, issues touches the interests of individuals mm. so individuals of the plot owners and uh, um, we, we need to discipline. I mean, have to have to know that the benefit of building by laws. Then only the the uh, individual owners or mm. the interests of the, uh, the the individuals will somehow, you know, mm. will learn. Otherwise, unless they learn the benefits, then uh, we cannot implement. Even uh, we may uh, uh, enforce uh, with a lot of police forces, it becomes problem sometimes. So it, we can say that the, there should be more awareness on that as well yeah, to make yeah, people yeah. understand about what building by laws actually is. So I think uh, what we're saying there is also so that uh, when building by laws is actually implemented, people would actually feel like their rights are being infringed or their freedom to use make use of their lands yeah, will exactly, be infringed. Exactly, so maybe exactly. that's why. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They, so they see that the infringement of their interest is uh, happening. They want they to encroach the road. Yeah. <laughs> 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 or they don't want to give a space for to the public. So we'll, we'll come back to that again <laughs> on a detailed <laughs> form. So yeah, coming back to you, ma'am, uh, we'd want to know, uh, you know, uh, we want to know how, talking about building by laws here, we'd like to know how safe are buildings in Dimapur and Kohima specifically, like, you know, how safe are, considering that uh, those are the places where more of developmental activities take place. Yeah, so um, when we see the building activities that are happening, especially in uh, Dimapur and Nagaland, uh, in Kohima, like uh, some people make use of architects and engineers, but some they uh, do it with the help of their local mysteries. So they compromise a lot on the structural issues, the, the, structural, um, the structural safety they have compromised. And, uh, you know... Um, the height, when, uh, like, with only a limited uh, amount of columns, they uh, go, uh, the build, there is no, um, 
you know, there is no uh, control of the height that they can go. So uh, the owner, uh, since there are no building bylaws, he can go uh, any height, uh, however he wants. Uh, and also, um, like, there is a lot of encroachment and drainage also, uh, like, they encroach, encroach on the drainage line also. So um, I think all these are also problems that um, we can see when there is no building bylaws, it is not followed. and. Yeah. Right, getting back to you. So do you like to add up more to what uh, Ma'am has said? So like, uh, how safe are the buildings when you look at it? Yes. Actually, uh, you cannot blindly say that the uh, building is safe or mm. in buildings unsafe. Right, I mean, right. in, the, in the context of uh, buildings in Kohima and then Dimapur. Unless and until uh, we go for testing or verification. Uh, actually, people are... But, but, people are... Till today, people are not serious with this earthquake, right. and then people are just taking lightly, in spite of the so many warnings regarding this our you know earthquake, uh, uh, these um, warnings. Since we are in Zone Five, right. so but then uh, maybe we have to learn a hard way. So, but uh, because of that, because of that, people are not serious. They don't want to spend extra involving you know taking the advice of uh, you know te technical people or you know uh, like. Uh, engineers so because of that they just rely only on the you know non unskilled laborers or mysteries from uh, from outside right. whereby they just uh, you know compromise the safety so just uh, seeing the buildings coming up you know mushrooming in a random way have a certainly it uh, we can just make out Be being a technical per people person i uh, i feel that uh, we are you know taking a lot of risk so it's high time that uh, unless and until uh, this uh, building by law comes up, uh, this will go on and then it will be increasing the risk more and more. Right, so also uh, when it comes to the safety of buildings, actually who is supposed, which department or which authority is supposed to go and check uh, if, if this building is safe, if this, uh, if this building is earthquake resilient and all those things, which uh, authority is supposed to go and check all of that? Actually once building by law is you know, uh, enforced, as I said, uh, you know, that municipal council or authority or whatever, right. whoever takes up the, you know, that uh, enf enforcement department or agency or uh, authority, they will have a full set, they need to have a full set of team, whereby even in the pre-construction period, they will be definitely going and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, scrutinizing their papers, drawings, everything. And then while constructing, also they will go and see. And then even after completion also they will go and see and then if it is not as per the you know drawings or as per the you know approved uh, this thing uh, then they they can uh, you know can be penalized or they can be you know uh, yeah they can be penalized or they can be made to correct it so right. so they will be the one to check all those things yeah but since it is yet to come up so <coughs> we can't say now yeah so do you want to add up more to that yeah um safety issues it's a, it's a matter of common sense. Right. Um, but now with the population growth, the urbanization taking place, um, horizontal expansion of any cities or town is not happening. Mm. Uh, so that means uh, we are uh, somehow pressured into uh, building higher, higher, not vertical. And when we build vertical, in the past, of course, many buildings, uh, maybe one story, two story. Mm. Now, many buildings are now coming up uh, four, five, six, seven. Now, when it comes to four, five, six, seven, um, the people who build uh, certainly uses their common sense and uh, uh, with uh, the, the, the practices over the years. Yet, at the same time, uh, many owners, they feel that consulting expertise may cause them. So they want to use a simpler uh, method of uh, cheap uh, labels and all this. But then when it comes to higher uh, buildings, certainly they must be using people, the expertise, expert, the, the professionals. And when it comes to safety issues, I believe the professionals will be taking care of that particular prof uh, safety issue. So uh, whether uh, there are a lot of activities in Kohima or uh, in Dimapu. People who uses the professional services mm. certainly will have some safety factors, and people who do not, 
maybe uh, they may not consider the foundations as such, or maybe uh, even some, some of the structural members which uh, need to be properly reinforced may not be considered. But those are two categories. Right. And when it comes to classifications of safety and unsafety structures, it, it will take some time for us. We have not reached to this stage right. because the authorities have to be formed, then we have to do all those classifications. Also, sir, uh, just out of my cur uh, curiosity, I just want to know, uh, when it comes to hilly areas and also plain areas, I think there must be different different kind of laws that, okay, this building should be about th uh, this high, this high. So, uh, what is the building, like the maximum amount of stories one can building can have when it comes to uh, hilly places like Kohima or plain places like Dimapur? Are there any differences? Actually, according to my understanding, mm -hmm. So long the foundation is okay, so long so long the the building is well designed. Why? Right? Because if, even in a hill station, right. even though it may be very high rise building, if the wind loads are all considered, mm. if the foundation is okay, then uh, I think there's no such uh, limit. Just that, just that you know, it can be even in the plain sector. Yeah. If okay. it is not well considered, if it is not well considered, then even that also has to be limited. So it so all depends on the foundation. No, no. Foundation, it has to be a good foundation mm -hmm. and it has to be well-designed yeah, structure. Uh, also, sir, we want to know when, it, when we're talking about building by no, by laws. By now, the only uh, knowledge that I had was I, I thought that building by laws are supposed to be only practiced by engineers and architects and all those planners. You know, but is it uh, the thing that when even a person when they are building their own houses, do uh, like if building by laws is implemented or thing, they should have a knowledge about all these laws. Surely they should. Uh, yeah, as I said, it, it come back to common sense. Mm -hmm. huh? that I should leave uh, a certain spaces between my neighbor building and my building. And uh, I should leave some certain spaces, you know, b uh, in front of my buildings uh, so that the, the public uh, will have the convenience of uh, mm -hmm. passing through. So those are some of the uh, things that one should have. Now, um, when, we, uh, when we have a building bylaws in place, then only they'll come to know a little mm. more in details. Okay. Right. okay. Otherwise, these are the common sense. But what is happening is that, as a human uh, greed is uh, so interesting that we want to go up mm. to the middle of the road even. Huh? So that we have, because of that, we have traffic uh, congestions. We have not given any leeway in between. We call it setbacks in the building bylaws. Though the setback means uh, a, a, a building should not come up to boundary, there should be some setback be, uh, for, safety, uh, for safety issues like fire hazards and whatnot, whatnot. Then the building should not occupy the entire plot of land uh, because there should be some green spaces or some open spaces. So we call it coverage of the building uh, thing. So these are covered in building, but the technical issues are there. All right, all right. Example 50%, yes, 40%, yes. 50% of the plot size. So okay. like in the front, we call it a frontage front is that uh, if it is along the mm -hmm. commercial area, mm -hmm. there has to be a sufficient space. The more, the higher the building, the more again you have to push okay, back okay. so that you give. give so if I own a plot of land, I can't make use of the whole plot of land, yes, but I'll have yes, to yes. <coughs> leave you need to keep space. Why? Because you see, it's not only keeping the front mm. frontage uh, site uh, setback, but you see, you have uh, the building by law will cover even, you know, the drainage system, the sanitation aspects. Because just because I have my plot of land, I cannot just you know make a, a septic tank and then no, no pollution to uh, my neighbor. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. all those yeah. things are covered in the building by laws. Okay. Yeah. You young people mm. uh, uh, surely uh, are aware of the environmental issues, right. and when you really want to cover your entire plot of land with your building, then you're leaving uh, no space for any soft, no, no mm. soft space, all the hard surfaces, right? right? So uh, uh, your carbon uh, problem is there. Uh, so, so these are actually the environmental issues which building bylaws again take care of those mm. environmental issues right. because your coverage should be limited to this, uh, your hard surfaces should be limited to this. Then when there, there, there are uh, usages in that building, mm. then services issues are there water drainages, sep uh, septage issues, then water supply, all those things are there. So unless, you know, the, the 
holding capacity of that land, uh, that particular plot of land is uh, calculated. Mm. So this also comes the technical issues in the building bylaws. Oh, yeah. That of course we, it is outside of our, you know, because it is too technical. Mm. If building bylaws differ from city to city, or how is it? Okay, so um, there is one common uh, building bylaw which has been framed by the government of India, which is called uh, model building bylaw. So all the um, that is one uh, basis from which all the states can, uh, you know, uh, take note from, and then they can uh, uh, each state they can. Uh, take that as a base and then they can uh, use that in their context. They can add some points uh, which they feel that if the authorities feel that it is necessary or they can take away some points uh, uh, which they feel is not relevant. So uh, that uh, base is there but uh, some amendments and some few points uh, they can, uh, each, it differs in the context of each state, state in state. So, um, okay. that is the, uh, that's the basis, yeah. All right, thank you so much, ma'am. Also, so as ma'am mentioned, uh, it's different from city to city. So, uh, when it comes to, if we implement or if we draft out building by laws for Nagaland as well, then uh, which would be a better fit for Nagaland? According to my <coughs> understanding, you see, like, uh, yeah, it may differ from city to city, region to region. Very true. So because of which, uh, what I feel is that, uh, taking the example of our nearest uh, city, Guwahati, mm -hmm. I think uh, we can go in line with that. And then uh, maybe there may be, what I heard is uh, our building by law, Nagaland building by law was approved in 2012. But uh, mm -hmm. because of this uh, amendment instruction from the uh, union uh, government, so because of which they could not really come up with the enforcement issues. But what I feel is that the enforcement can take place. And then if any, you know, additional, uh, those sort of thing, amendment is to be, you know, added or amended, then they can be issued in the form of corrigendum. Okay. So it's high time that we start uh, enforcing. Yes, maybe sir has already mentioned because of, you know, our local problems, like uh, regarding the land hold, holding oh, system. Yes. But we cannot always uh, bang on uh, this uh, or give excuse on this uh, land holding system. At least, at least we have to go with the rest of the country, country. especially for our major cities uh, or major towns, say like Dimapur, Kohima, Mohokchun, or for that matter, main uh, district headquarters. Otherwise, we say we always blame on land holding system and then we cannot, uh, you know, go as per the <coughs> what other rest of the country are going or doing then it's our own loss ultimately. Right. Mm -hmm. So also one question is, uh, I think uh, more it's when we're building, of course, safety is the first concern, like, you know, because you're, it's, it's a building. But again, uh, the other issues like uh, parking issues when, when, when it comes to Nagaland and congestion. So do you think if this building by law is, is implemented, then it will uh, help us tackle all those other issues as well? So yeah. if you can. Yeah, surely. Um, actually, it has to come from um, uh, from uh, master plans right. of uh, cities, and in Nagaland we do have Town and Country Planning Act inf already enacted. With and that Town and Country Planning Act regulates the land uses of different uh, land uses in the in, in the in the towns in the cities. And that loses is also, uh, the, you know, give certain um, issues, I mean, mm -hmm. certain usage for roads and all this. And with these regulatory issues, then comes the building bylaws. And when we, when we combine these two issues, then mm -hmm. the surely, because in the Act of Town and Planning and Country Act, uh, all these parking issues are mm -hmm. also taken care of where building bylaws again related to the individual buildings that your uh, your uh, uh, to to comply with the town and country plan is where your frontage should be like this like this like this so that they naturally solves your uh, yes. parking problems right. uh, it, 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 in fact it is not the building bylaws which is going to but it is a part of the compliances mm. comes under town and country planning okay. act for 
uh, all the rot and uh, uh, our friend Pojar will be uh, knowing the the uh, national highways issues where mm -hmm. you know the building should come only up to this the, then uh, comes the uh, district roads all these are there the frontages have its own regulations right. so but we're not following it yeah. <laughs> the bottom line is that we're not following it so yeah so would you like to add up more to that as well or That's all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in, uh, in Nagaland, there are safety controls such as uh, fire safety elements for uh, building, but these apparently are still a new subject. So, uh, who ensures that these controls are in places? <coughs> I've already uh, mentioned mm. once building by laws is enforced by a certain you know uh, municipal authority or like that. Then mm -hmm. under that municipal authority, enforcing uh, authority, there will be a set of experts mm -hmm. from various departments, say from P uh, from uh, engineers from PWD, architects from PWD, or say power department from I mean in power engineer from PWD uh, power, and uh, similarly say PHE and mm -hmm. all those like that experts, whatever is uh, required. So like that uh, in the co construction, uh, you know period, all those uh, factors, uh, you know, they will have to go and see from time to time. Right. Uh, whether they are going in line with the uh, approved drawings or approve uh, those things, nah? when they, because before any construction starts, mm. they have to apply with the size of the plot, everything, and size of the plot and with the full details of the drawing and the four, all the floor mm. areas of the, you know, drawing they will have to give. So naturally, they will know they will uh, that mean they will submit with three drawings example mm -hmm. then they will retain one drawing so whenever they go for checking they will have to take and then they'll have mm -hmm. to verify so if they're going off track means definitely they'll be <coughs> they'll be made to you know correct it so from their construction period itself mm -hmm. only they can be you know uh, corrected if not they will not be given a mm -hmm. completion certificate okay. yes all right also i can i think i'll uh, speak to ma'am apokla again hi ma'am uh, can you hear me yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think we're. I'm going a little bit further from building by laws here, but I just want to know. We in Nagas, I think we have this uh, habit, or we have this thing of when making a building, our houses or any infrastructures, we usually prefer uh, hiring chukalis and not. You know, we think that it's more expensive. I think when we hire professionals, I think we feel like it's more expensive. Do you ha do you have to say anything about that, ma'am? Yeah. Um yeah, that is so common in our state. Like, uh, um, they hire, uh, they, they do not want to hire architects or professionals because they think that it is expensive. But uh, if we think about it practically, like, uh, uh, it is, in the long run, it is more expensive if you do not hire an architect. Because, um, you know, uh, if you hire an architect, you are able to plan out from the beginning. You are able to design the building in, uh, you know, in the way that you want, uh, and the uh, structural uh, structural safety is also not compromised. But uh, mysteries, what they uh, they compromise on a lot of things, like um, on from a safety point of view, and they do not uh, take into consideration the aesthetics, also the comfort, and uh, what is the taste of the clients like. So uh, all these things, I think. Um, um, it is better if you consult an architect in the first place because uh, in our practice also we have uh, lots of uh, 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 clients who come to us saying that they started building, uh, they started their building uh, thinking that they will do it with the help of the mystery but uh, they got stuck midway and they So to avoid all that, I think it is better to hire an architect in the first place. And um, when you are spending lots of money, say uh, uh, 50 lakhs on a building, if you spend a small percentage from the beginning itself, say 2 lakhs or whatever, uh, in the uh, proper planning and designing of the building, then it will save you a lot of money in the long run. And um, yeah, so I think uh, it is a wise choice to hire an architect. Yeah. 
Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, so, yeah. would you like to add up yeah. more to that? Yes. Uh, I, I want to uh, mention a little bit about that implementation in the first place. Mm. Now, um, we are not implementing by bidding bylaws, but we can start with uh, the way that the Mapur Municipal Council and uh, Kohima Municipal Council. We can start with these people because they are already doing the, uh, uh, giving the building permit, right. the construction permit. And this construction permit uh, just s uh, allowing them to construct, but they can, you know, they can insist on having their uh, building plans done by professionals in the first place. And till our building bylaws get implemented, we will rely on th those professionals who will, who have, should have the knowledge of the building bylaws, will somehow uh, do their uh, drawings, designs, according to the uh, model or in international standards. I mean, this is a, this actually building bylaws is it coming from uh, practices all over the country, all mm -hmm. over. Uh, 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 in, in, in internationally mm -hmm. so there are standards there are uh, so the professionals will definitely should abide by right. then uh, the owners will apply the uh, thing then we will save quite a lot mm -hmm. uh, from all the uh, issues which is uh, you know wi which we are facing right. so we can start with this in even if we don't implement we can request this uh, KMC and DMC to get the uh, uh, give the building permit uh, uh, construction permit done by or the proposal given by professionals mm -hmm. so they should not blindly sign just because of a drawing it should not be given by a simple drawing it mm -hmm. had to be done by a professionals then only we'll have some sort of after you know, verifying thing. the site yes mm -hmm. yes 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 after, after verifying the site correct correct okay, so do you want to add up more to that that's all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, also uh, out of curiosity, when uh, there are buildings that are also structures that are governmental also, I mean all those things. So when all these things are, uh, some disaster happens, suppose an earthquake or fire and the, or maybe perhaps a collapse of the building. So who, is, who would be taken responsible for that, sir? <coughs> for earthquake and disaster, I think, uh, you know, there is a... Uh, there are uh, these uh, home guards and all for right. post disaster management. We call it a re uh, search and rescue okay. operations. So they have been doing uh, these mock drills and all those things. So I think, uh, of course, the uh, administration will be very much involved. Why? Because whatever, whenever any such emergency situation arises, administration they they have to be there in the picture. So apart uh, from the administration, it is uh, the all those uh, police and then uh, home guards, I think they are, they are specially trained for that. Right. Last time I attended a meeting, they were talking about that also. Uh, of course, but that is a post-disaster management. Mm. I mean, post-disaster drills. Mm -mm. And uh, the, uh, apart from that, there is, uh, you know, the most important part thing, I think I, I personally feel that uh, that has been, uh, uh, you know, not given much importance. Why? Because, uh, you know, should I go uh, into the topic? Yes, yes, mm. please continue. Why? Because uh, this disaster man management, you see, you have uh, come up with that uh, disaster management. That's why I will just uh, speak on that. Yes, we have two types of disaster management. I mean, management. One is pre-disaster and one is post-disaster. Right. So that collapse and all those, you know, rescue and o operation and all those comes under post-disaster management. Mm. But you see, our people, we are really not paying a uh, do uh, more importance to the pre-disaster management. Right. Why? Because when we give more importance and we are prepared with the pre-disaster management, then we can mitigate mitigate uh, you know loss of lives, which is very precious. We cannot even buy with money. So when uh, we are prepared with uh, you know pre-disaster management activities, you know we can mitigate. And what is the pre-disaster management? Uh, I'll tell you that also. Why? Because uh, you know we there 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 has been uh, for so many years do's and don'ts has been you know going on right, right. Uh, in the seminars and all those things uh, do's and don'ts during disaster what, i mean during earthquake what do you have to do or what do you have to keep or all those things but even if you don't know do's and don'ts that is not going to save 
us. Right. What we need to do is we have to come up with a very safe building mm. because earthquake will not uh, strike only at daytime when you are outside your <laughs> house. Exactly. It will most of the earthquakes. You know, if we see the past earthquakes. It is not because of uh, earthquakes that killed the people. It was because of the collapse of buildings that killed right. the people. So because of that, here building by laws is that's why we're touching even the you know uh, disaster also. Uh, we have to be very. Our house has to be secure, and that is uh, secure in the sense uh, we have to you know check or test our buildings, which are unsafe. If it is unsafe, we have to retrofit. We have to rehabilitate and strengthen it, or otherwise, if it is. A new building, we have to come up, uh, you know, construct in a proper way so that during earthquake, no such uh, disaster takes place. So that is the pre-disaster management exercise, which has to be given more importance than post-disaster management. Post-disaster management means we are just waiting, let 100 people die, okay, <laughs> then 100 people die and then we go and rescue yes, or yes. Some, some operation. It's something like that. But if we do pre-disaster management, I think we can save a lot of lives. Yeah. We, we need not, uh, 100 people need not die. Right. Maybe 10 people, unlucky people may die. But 90 people can be saved. So this is what I want to emphasize. Yeah, like Pre-disaster yeah. management is more important. Yes. And there, who has to involve? I think uh, now we are, we are talking we about uh, uh, yeah, by laws. Like this so, year, yeah, yeah. prevention is better than cure, exactly, as we exactly. say. So, so do, you, do you also want to add up more to that? Also, uh, like we are talking about earthquake now, suddenly if an uh, earthquake is to happen, then how safe are the buildings here in Nagaland then? How, uh, you know, even be it Dimapur or Kohima, how safe are they? Earthquake is gut activity, no? Right, right. So, um, for a small uh, uh, sister scale, I think we have no problems. Mm. For a larger scale, um, I, uh, I think we have a lot of issues, but that also we do not know. Mm. We cannot say that our buildings are safe and not safe. It all depends on the God protections, as far as I'm concerned. Yet, yet, yet uh, 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 what Pojar said, we need to take care of the uh, pre-disaster mm. uh, activities, wherein um, uh, any structures that is to be designed we got to take care of those structural safety issues, designing things. And um, uh, in the process, uh, uh, where I was mentioning about the building permit, uh, right, construction right. permit, there for s smaller structure, perhaps it is easier for a, a complex building, then it has to, not just the mini uh, whoever gives, not, not one, two persons, but it has to go through a panel of experts for approval of right. such uh, structures. Then only, so uh, it, it, it has a layer of uh, mm. stages of approval have to be done. Right. Then only maybe perhaps our uh, safety could right. be mitigated to some extent. Right. Also yes, shall yes, I add again? Yes, sir, please <laughs> if you want to, then you're more yeah. than welcome. You see, building by laws, why it is important is, you see, from earthquake point of view, mm. I, as a technician, mm. technical, technocrate, I may construct a very safe building, mm. according to my own uh, capacity. I may keep, uh, you know, enough provision, this side or that side, frontage or side, but then my immediate neighbor, who is not, you know, who doesn't care about mm. this, uh, all this uh, thing, mm. may come up with a building, no, uh, in an irregular shape, we yeah. call it, Irregular shape, which is not good for you know earthquake, earthquake point of view, mm -hmm. because earthquake movement is uh, horizontal. Mm -hmm. So like that, uh, you know, unsafe building which is next adjacent to my building, mm -hmm. then in case earthquake strikes, then even though my building is okay, that uh, that building if it collapse, collapse and then s fall upon my right, building, right. no, it's uh, you know, right. I'm also in uh, danger. Right. So like that, uh, because of that, you know, we, uh, this uh, building by law is very important. The mm. restriction will be there. Everything limit as everything will be you know restricted. So because of that, because when we talk about uh, you know disaster, it is not just primary disaster. Mm. We have a secondary disaster as well, right. and secondary disaster though that that also I can explain. <laughs> it is uh, you know we have right. to be aware yes. of that. Yes. yes. Right. Since we're running out of time again, like ma'am, I'll come to you, ma'am uh, Apok. We'd want to know, you know, uh, it's a million dollar question here, but uh, can we say that is this, uh, is it too late to implement the building by laws in the state or what is your view on that? Um, 
I think it's not too late because there are so many uh, areas which are yet to be developed. So in those we can have uh, a building bylaws, and in the areas which have already been built, uh, I think there can be some, um, you know, some set of rules and regulations so that uh, the uh, buildings are improved upon. And especially while uh, it's not only for fresh buildings like. Uh, the buildings which are new, but for buildings which are uh, to be renovated also. So uh, the building um, bylaws apply to those uh, those things also. So for the renovations and all those things, uh, we can um, we can make use of the building bylaws in those areas. All right, thank you. Ma'am, also, uh, sir, I would like to come back to you. We have been talking about building by laws and we have been of the view that it's better if we implement building by laws here in Nagaland also. But we have uh, you, uh, you guys have also mentioned about how, uh, you know, people will feel uh, infringed off their uh, rights or infringed off their freedom when it comes to building as well. So how can we, in a good way, you know, try to, imp uh, if it's implemented, then also make people aware about the benefits of the building by laws. How do we uh, spread the awareness? What can we do? Any of you can? Um, yeah. You understand? Um, yes, there are uh, 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 some apprehensions that if building by laws is uh, enforced strictly, uh, people who have already done their structures have and do not did not uh, comply uh, the building by laws. The perhaps the uh, uh, apprehension is that they may be punished. Mm -hmm. So now here actually we have to be flexible. We have to understand because when uh, a law is not enforced and it is we have allowed them to do, perhaps we have to see that you know the, this apprehension is removed mm -hmm. because when we had a discussion about uh, building by laws sometime in. Con Kohima Municipal Watts. You no, know, some people have expressed their apprehensions, yeah. but so so these are the areas. But at the same time, uh, for any new uh, activities, yes. if we can actually, uh, you know, enforce mm -mm. or say that people, uh, these are the benefits because basically it is uh, for your own benefit, mm. the interest of uh, your own. Because you'll in the building balance. Uh, there'll be provision for lights, uh, provision for air ventilations, mm. provision for uh, your uh, uh, safety issues like fire safety issues, the setways, leeways, and all these provision technical issues are there which is to your benefit and to yeah. your neighbors. As uh, Bojar was mm -hmm. mentioning that uh, sec uh, the, uh, anything, if you, your building may be safe, but another fellow is, mm. you know, crumbling down and yeah. so, for the new ones, I believe with the you young uh, generations are also seeing the congestion of the roads. Right. Uh, a lot of uh, awareness already there. Right. You're already there. The only thing is that the, the implementation in the right place is not taking place. Right. And we c it's not late. We can do it. And in fact, it is the right time. Everybody is aware now. Right. But we can do the campaign furthermore. Mm -hmm. And right. that responsibility can be given to maybe municipal uh, uh, thing. The, uh, I, I believe the municipal election is coming up very soon. Mm. So uh, with this public support, the mandate, uh, I think things will be much better. And I feel that there has to be a political will. Yes, right. yes. Right. Surely, this is important. Because of political will, we are not doing it. Right. But basically, it is that. Why we are not doing it? Because there is no political will. Right. So ending this, sir, would you like to add up anything to whatever sir said? Yeah, that's why I supplement that. <laughs> the political yeah, okay, that's yeah. it. That is, that, is the, that is the main, yeah, main thing. Okay. All right. I think that's all we'll have for today's talk show. I'm pretty sure. And thank you so much to all my three guests for all the inputs. I'm pretty sure that our viewers are now more aware about what building by laws are. And according to the discussion we had today, we, we are not, I mean, of course, I have to stay in the neutral side, but I think our guests are in the uh, more of the view that building by laws should be implemented. I think, and according to them, it's just not for ourselves, but also for everybody surrounding us and for safety and also for our own benefits. So that's all we'll have for today's talk show. Thank you so much for watching on Will TV.